Hmm. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, that's way too dark. Wait. Nah, that's too dark. Like that. Alright. <laughs> Yo, 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 what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, baby, representing Team Kings of Games. And uh, today I'm going to be showcasing you guys what I feel like is the strongest rogue deck right now. Uh, it used to be the strongest meta deck. It used to be the best tier one deck, like, ban worthy, you know, people complained about it. And it got power crept. I feel it wasn't really power crept. I feel like it just got overshadowed in the terms of popularity and representation. I don't think this deck lost any of its good cards. In fact, it's better now than it's ever been. It's definitely, you know, stronger than what people say it is. But you guys know, you know, us shit all players, we're going to keep the dream alive. So I'm going to showcase you guys my list. Um, I do, I'm keeping in mind the decks of this format, knowing what's around. Um, and honestly, the fact that this deck is able to break decks, like, it's able to destroy decks and break boards of five to six negates alone without any hand traps or any engine besides just the shadows themselves and how they're naturally played is already so powerful itself and when you guys see my list you're gonna see that i built it in a specific way to counter the biggest weaknesses that this deck has one of the biggest weaknesses that i'm always fearful about is abyss dweller because it's a generic rank for it that a lot of decks can make these days and it can just shut me down so keeping that in mind I have a game plan for Abyss Dweller and Negations when I go second. You guys are going to see it. This list is actually a really huge problem solver. Um, it solves a lot of the problems of Shadows. Of the Negations, of the Ash Blossom, you know, all these different cards that normally would shut you down. If you open the cards that I'm putting into my main deck and my side deck, they will counter those hard counters. The cards that are meant to hard counter your deck, you have the outs to them. So let's go ahead and get into the list. And it's really consistent. This deck is gas. So... You guys know how I do it. I love me some 60 card decks and I make them work, you guys. I don't just make a 60 card brick fest. They work. And I show even, you know, duels and different things to prove that they're consistent. So we're going to start off with three copies of Mathematician. Mathematician single handedly is the strongest normal summon and the most versatile in this deck. He can do a myriad of different things. Uh, then next up for the dolls, we're playing three copies of Squamata. Squamata is legitimately the best shit all monster in the game, in the main deck in the game. Um, you know, as far as extra deck, Construct is probably the best. Um, but Squamata basically does what Construct does. Sure, it doesn't add a fusion from graveyard to hand or any spells or traps, but it does exactly what Construct does. So keep in mind, this card is actually very, very strong uh, for utility purposes, for getting anything that you need. It also is easily three extra copies of any shit all that you want it to be. So that goes in hand with my three copies of Wendy and also my three copies of Hedgehog. I like to showcase these 12 monsters when doing my profiles because these are interchangeable. These make your lineup more consistent by maxing out on them because this can search any of these, this can dump any of these, this can special any of these, and this could dump any of them. So this gives you 12 extra of any should all name that you need. If you need, for example, a beast, Squamata will get you it. If you need, for example, a Falco or an Ariel, Wendy will get you it. If you need to search any should all, Hedgehog will get you. If you need anything done with your deck, Mathman will get you there. So these 12 cards are gas. They're consistency cards that are gonna help you to get access to your engine. And this deck, when it gets its engine online, it gets so annoying because every time you kill one of my cards, I'm getting cards back. The recursion, the pluses, one card OTKs, being able to lock my opponent out, manage my resources, play mid-range combo or control or even all of them in the same deck. That's crazy. That's like the best of both worlds. When you have hand traps, back rows, and a super strong combo that used to be mainstream, you know, it's really good. But I'm going to continue with the lineup. So um, I'm just going to show you guys the three of dolls, the ones that I kind of just I max out on them because they're just the best names because they replace themselves. I also play three copies of Beast and I'm still rocking three Ariel. Ariel still is like as strong as it was as the last format. It's kind of still strong. It's still strong against um, it's still strong against um, Salamander Greats. It's still strong against Sky Strikers. It's even strong against um, Zodiacs. You know, it's strong against any deck that's using Jet Synchron because they could just normal link into it and then you could just dump this and it just banish the Jet. Uh, this this card is just, it's a triple DD Crow. I, I feel like every deck needs something from their graveyard and this takes it away from them. So 
I really love playing three aerials. It's one of the best names. It's one of the best disruptions to send on your opponent's turn. And also, I like the combos that it does because I really do use aerial to banish my own shit alls so that my aerial, the second or third copy, it turns into a follow up that same game where I could just flip it and recur anything. And what I love to do the most is banish my fusion monster. So even if I'm not doing the combo with incarnation, anytime I could get aerial on field, I'll just flip it and then summon one of my fusion monsters that I banished off of it. So notably, Apocleon or Opcolone uh, or Construct. Those are the main ones that I like to um, banish so I can just get them back. So it's just a way to cheat your fusions back onto the field. And then the remainder of the Shadows, I play two copies of Shadow Dragon. Uh, Dragon is definitely super impactful at multiples. You just, especially for back row heavy decks, especially for altar guys, you need Dragon. And then I also play the one Falco. You could honestly play way more Falcos because Falco is super strong. I had an idea to just play three Falcos because Falco is crazy good. Um, it's just going to keep you in the game, you guys. It being a tuner, you could do Jet Synchron plays with, you know, Proxy Magician O-Line if you want to do that. I still play the one Kyos because it's a searchable light attribute. Its effect is eh, but it's a searchable light attribute and that's what's important. And I'm still playing my Hound because you can actually use Hound to do what the trap does without using the trap effect. And also Hound adds shit all monsters. Um, shit all cards from graveyard to hand. And you can also use it to prevent your opponent from attacking over your window. Um, it's just, it's good. <laughs> like, Hound is amazing, you guys. This card has so many applications that makes it even better than a pen and paper. Even, like, let's say you have, like, a Squamata, for example, in your hand. And your opponent has, like, Vanity's Fiend, for example. I'm pretty sure his defense is less than 18. You could just basically go foolish, dump Hound, uh, turn the Vanity's Fiend to defense, normal the Squamata, attack over the Fiend. Like, this card just outs so many things. It's weird how it works, but it's just, Hound is good, you guys. Uh, so that's going to wrap up the dog count. As you guys can see, I play a heavy, heavy, heavy doll count because I feel like my hand's dead if I don't see Shadals and Fusion Spells. So I play a bunch of Fusion Spells and a bunch of Shadals, and then everything in between is either going to draw to what I need or counter what my opponent uses against me. Um, for the remainder of the monsters, I play two Edge of Change from my Patchwork Engine. Kind of just made it a thing, and I'm not going to take it out. It's too good in this deck. It gets you a Dark First uh, Winda and a Fusion Spell. It's a plus one. I play Damage Juggler and Triclon still, just searchable lights. You can dump them off of Shit All Fusion, Foolish, or even Mathman. And then I'm main decking Gamma. The reason why Gamma is super strong in this deck is because Ash Blossom can negate Shit All Fusion and Abyss Roll is a problem. And anytime you're going second and you activate any fusion spell and your opponent tries to negate it, you can chain Gamma. It's crazy. Like, Gamma is super strong, you guys. Gamma is a problem solver. It also solves my Abyss Dweller problem. Where um, my opponent activates Dweller, I can just chain Gamma to negate it. Uh, really, really strong. When we get into the side deck, you guys will see even better interactions. Let me check time. Seven minutes in. Another thing, too, is Gamma's a light attribute. So it's like, dude, it just fuels more lights for your deck. Construct's like the best fusion to make right now just to get your engine going. Uh, Gamma's crazy good, you guys. It's also a basically a pseudo call by the grave for everything except Imperm. Uh, so. Moving forward to the spells, this is where it gets gas. Three copies of Patchwork, three copies of Desires. Your six plus ones of the deck. Actually, you play nine plus ones. So let me go ahead and drop those right there. Because when you resolve secrets to normal this and then go knowledge, you go from five cards in hand to six cards. You resolve Desires, you're at seven cards. You resolve Patchwork, you're at eight cards in hand. And then you do some crazy fusion combo and you end up keeping the same eight cards. <laughs> like it's crazy, you guys. Not only does this deck plus a lot, but it keeps its hand advantage as it's using the cards that it utilizes for its combo, they replace themselves. So when you're building your boards, you're recurring them. Construct literally searches any Shadal spell or trap because she sends it from deck to grave and then adds it from grave to hand. And when you're looping constructs, that's how you get your hand size back from two, three, up to four to five cards. So you just make all your boards free. And just having nine plus ones to basically allow you to deck in and also get your resources and the combo pieces you need, just super duper strong. Any of these could beta negation or a hand trap or force your opponent to play into Gamma, which is really, really nice. Because then Gamma is a free cross sheep after that. Continuing with the draw power, I play three copies of a Lord of Darkness. And for the rest of the gas, I play three fusion recycling plants. Uh, just to maximize uh, on, I'm trying to maximize on it, not every single card that searches poly, but on the good cards I get poly. This is going to search my poly from deck or grave to hand, and I'm just going to start recurring my resources off this. So this is how I just out-resource my opponent, because my fusion monsters are already recurring from grave, and this recurs from grave, so I'm just keeping my hand fat all the time, you guys. This deck is savage. 
honestly. And plant's good. It also lets your opponent play into gamma. That's why gamma is just so good in this deck. Like, goodness gracious. Uh, this card's amazing, you guys. And then for the rest of the gas, as far as non-fusion spells go, because the best spells are always going to be fusion spells, because that's what you need to play. Uh, the one foolish, the ultimate utility, any doll you want. It's math man without normal summoning, which is great. <laughs> So all of these are consistency cards, like they just get you what you need. Even some of them like Patchwork and Plant, they're part of the gas because once you get a fusion spell, you're good to go because you guys see my high doll count. Like all I really need is a fusion spell and I'm going off on my opponent, obliterating them. And when you have multiple fusion spells, that's why I like having so many ways to search them because when you're going second, a smart player is going to save their negates for that. Something else I will say that should also really good at is if your opponent is putting up monster negate boards with cards like, you know, um, Appaloosa and other monster negators like that, and they don't have enough Omni negates. Let's say they have one or two spell or trap negates and the rest are monster negates. The only negates you have to bait are the spell or trap ones, because once you resolve your fusion spells, you chain block. So your monster negates that your opponents are using against you, you're going to force them to negate cards they don't want to negate, if that makes sense, because your chain link one always is going to be your priority, which is crazy. So... This deck's really, really good at playing through monster negates. I'll say that. Shadows are amazing. Uh, for the fusion spells, obviously, three Shadow fusions. This card's gas. Uh, also, my favorite one, the most flexible and reactive, three L's. Chain it to everything. <laughs> and then we have uh, three copies of Poly. The supplemental engines in my deck are requiring Poly. Um, I feel like it's the next best fusion spell. My engines that I play make this even more consistent in Invoke because you have three Alistair's, three Meltdowns of Terraforming to get to the invocations. But... For the poly, I have Edge of Chain, the 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 Fluffle, the Fright for Patchwork, and also the um the Field Spell, the Fusion Recycling Plant, and I can even play uh, Luna Light Black Sheep. So I have a lot more cards that work with the poly engine than the Invoked engine. So you could consider the poly a replacement for Invoked, and also it gives me space in my extra deck. I'm not really a huge Invoked fan. I'm not saying that it's bad, but I like Pure. And then for my traps, I play two Incarnations. And then one should all core. As you guys notice, I've cut down from three of this to two. So I have to be really careful because this is my favorite trap in this deck. So I got to be really careful with this. Like, very, very careful. In fact, if I'm able to, send it from my deck to the grave first before I resolve desires. Because this is a huge part of your grind game. And that's going to be the main deck, you guys. Let me check something out. All right. For my um, extra deck, I'm still rocking the OG. <laughs> Not the OG, but you know what I mean. The four constructs, yes. Uh, constructs are amazing in this deck. And with Recycling Plant, you can basically fuse with Construct into another Construct or another Fusion and use Recycling Plant to put it back into your extra deck. So now you can recycle your extra deck cards so that you don't run out of steam. So the deck's going to be gas from start to finish. And then I play two copies of Op Cologne. Op Cologne is really, really strong. I'm still rocking the two. You guys are going to see I still play Extra Foolish Burial because I think that card's super duper powerful. I just use it for going second because that's where it's better. Going first, you can't set, but when you use it for going second, you use it to OTK your opponent. So these cards are just to start my engine. When you have bad hands and you can still summon this, you just link it in the gravity controller and get something that you need. Um, I still play Double Winda. This deck is really, really fire against um, Lightning Storm, Evenly Matched, and Dark Ruler No More, and even Kaijus, Lava Golems, and Spear Molds. The reason being is because if your opponent evenlies you, you keep the window. If your opponent um, Lightning Storms your back rows, you chain them because they're all reactive. If your opponent Dark Rulers your window, you just fuse in for another one on your opponent's turn off L. If your opponent Kaijus your window, you can fuse into another one and you can re reborn it off the trap. So if you play Shadows and you know what you're doing, you're always going to have at least two ways to put window on the board after you already end on one. That's what I do. I like to set up for window with El Shadal Fusion and also Incarnation. So I have three ways to put window up with the one that I already have and then the two other ways to keep back up window. So if your opponent loses to window, they need to hard draw three outs. So if they have like Kaiju, Lightning Storm, Evenly, Dark Ruler, I explain to you guys how the, those really don't matter because at the end of the day, just keep Winda if they evenly you. They Lightning Storm your back rows, chain them. If they Dark Roller Winda on resolution, summon another one on L. If they Kaiju it, bring it back off the trap, summon another one on L. Like, it's just way too hard to out Winda if you're smart. That's where this deck gets annoying, and that's why I feel like it's still tier 1 to me. One Sheki and one Grista. Grista is super strong against Dinos. Dinos are meta. You want to negate the summon of Conductor. 
You want to negate the summon of Pancrotops. You want to just, you know, you just want to stop those summons. When you negate the summon of Pancrotops, they can't even chain it because it hasn't been established that it's there yet. And the same thing when you negate the summon of Conductor, they can't chain because you're negating its summon so it hasn't hit the field yet. So Grista is very slept on and Grista bodies Pendulums. If you play against Pendulums, all you do is just use this plus core because core allows you to use any attribute. It's any attribute you need. And then you negate your opponent's entire Pendulum summon. So Grista is a beast. So is Shecky. Uh, let me check timer. Okay. And then for the rest of the extra deck, um, I don't have all the good cards. Like, I don't have Opelousa anymore. But I will say, if I had um, Opelousa and Access Cold Talker, I would play them both. But here's my budget alternatives. I'm playing the Cross Sheep still because Cross Sheep's integral. These two are just mandatory for the deck. You can't cut those. Um, Dweller is Mando too because I feel like Dweller just bodies so many decks, including my own. That's why I have so many contingencies for this. So... I really just, and I have a lot of a, a lot of backup plans for Dweller, so I feel like I'm not losing to a Dweller unless I just played myself. Um, so these cards can easily be Access Code and um, Opelousa. I like that this is still really strong in this deck. You can trigger Bomber off Core, Incarnation, and Elshinol Fusion. So you can nuke your opponent's field three times. Also, I like this card going second because when you do the Shadal Fusion combo, you can summon this and nuke your opponent's field. And then you can take control of the duel, just swing for 3k, and now you have control. And whenever your opponent tries to out this, you can just chain L and then summon a wind diffusing with it. So it's, it's just really, really nice. It's a nice budget alternative to still have a strong link for a boss that can control the game state. Because Bomber's still insane. Right, Gekis are nice. And yeah, sure, it nukes your field, but the thing is, your fusion monsters float into other stuff anyways. And whenever this is getting on your nerves and you want it gone, you just fuse with it into Winda and you turn it off. And uh, this is just super strong. I was talking about how powerful this card is. You guys, I told you about this already. This this link is insane, you guys. It's, it's just too good. Uh, so now for the side deck. I side up three Nibirus. Um, the Nibirus and the Gammas are going to be what stops the FTK. If I'm not getting FTK'd, I can play going second and bait as many negates as I want. As long as it's not Dweller. But if it's Dweller, I do have contingencies. I just have to hard draw them. Um, like, I can break any combo deck board. That doesn't have Dweller, but if it has Dweller, I have to use my uh, basically my hard counters to Dweller and hope that I have enough because they have negates to protect the Dweller. Um, but Nibiru is insane, you guys, and it's a light, so you know, construct. And obviously, you know, it's you kind of like I don't like hand traps, but we're in a format now where you need them, otherwise, you're getting FDK. So the three Nibirus, uh, Denko Seka is just for like mainly Eldritch. Like, I can deal with their combo monster, like their little baby board of like Arc Light and Savage. When you just normal summon Dinko, you're already turning off the back rows, and you just swing over the arc light, and then you just activate Shit All Fusion. Main phase two, they chain Savage, you're like, all right, cool, activate another fusion spell, you're good to go. Or you just activate Poly to bait the Savage, and then activate Shit All Fusion. But Dinko is just super strong, especially against Alter Guys. And then, again, more gas, three extra Shit All Fusion, uh, extra Foolish Burials, but it's basically three extra Shit All Fusions. Uh, any shit all card. When I'm going second, I side this in for more gas, so I can just OTK my opponent out of nowhere. Um, again, you know, this this is kind of like budget extra deck, but if I play online, excess code talker is coming out in a multi-can. So these cards are pretty much interchangeable with each other. These are all counters to Dweller. And what I like about these is I can chain them. So if my opponent activates Dweller, I can chain this. They activate a negator, I can chain this. They activate another one, I can chain this. And also I still have Gamma. So cards like Gamma, Chalice, and Imperm allow me to play going second. Not just oh, okay, not just against Abyss Dweller, but also Monster Negators. I like Widow Anchor. It like Chalice is good too. I like Widow Anchor also because when I fusion summon, I can put it in the extra monster zone. So that if they like, you know, if even if I get a fusion monster on field, I can still have a live Widow Anchor. And because I play so many spells, I can actually take my opponent's monsters with the Widow Anchor. So I, I just like the wake Widow Anchors. Instead of just maxing out on chalices, I get basically six forbidden chalices that all have different applications from each other. And they still all stop Dweller. That's the ultimate goal. If your opponent activates Dweller, you chain any one of these six or the three gamma. So you have nine ways to stop Abyss Dweller. If your opponent has negations, that's why these are really going to come in handy. Because when your opponent is... That's why like these... It can't be like Kaijus. It can't be like Lava Golem or Dark Roller because your opponent can activate Dweller in the standby. Just for the simple fact that they can, that's why these cards are super important because you might have a war against your opponent in standby. They're like, standby Dweller, and you're like, ah, chain, 
and they're like, ah, chain the gate. Some people might wait for you to control a card, but then they're also playing it to Dark Ruler. So it's really, sometimes they're like, uh, what are the odds? He'll probably have a Dark Ruler before he has an Imperm. So no Dweller, you'll chain one of these and hope that you have more. That's why I like these six. But that's the game plan to stop Abyss Dweller, as you guys can see. I take Dweller seriously because I know my deck's weaknesses. So that's why I like, I, you know, I, I kind of, I know what I'm doing it when it comes to Shadows. I think I know what I'm doing, but that's the deck profile. I'm going to say a quick prayer. And uh, then I'm going to be out, you guys. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Jesus. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Uh, please give us this day our daily bread, Lord, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Peace out, y'all.